<clears throat> okay, so time for more questions. Because <laughs> I have some more questions. Um, not yesterday, but the day before yesterday, on the 12th, after I walked back, I did a live stream. I walked back from Baker's Crossroads when my car was being a dick. And uh, as soon as I got to my dad's, after the live stream, I proceeded to do a little investigation on my phone. I was standing outside, and this is the screen recording that I did during that time. Um, I had some questions about his network, but I'm going to skip past that. Um, but as I'm doing that, then I, I get a couple, a couple planes fly directly over me, directly over me. So I took advantage of the opportunity while I was recording to go ahead and look at the data on these flights. And I'm not saying anything, I'm not claiming anything, but I'm just going to share that right now, this recording of this data. And, and what I was told afterwards, um, <laughs> so let's just get into it here. Um, I'm just going to fast forward. This is the you know, network stuff. I had some questions about why, you know, with his network, why the hotspot didn't pop up and why, why it gives me the IP address it gives me. And because nobody, nobody messes with his, his Wi-Fi at all. He doesn't, he doesn't know how, you know. So anyway. As I'm sitting there doing this, right, in recording, looking at my phone, then I hear the jet start flying over, right? So my microphone wouldn't work, so I recorded this, but that's why I'm doing this now. So so I get out of here, I open the flight data, the flight uh, radar 24. <coughs> and I can look at my location. And the flight that just flew over my head would have been this guy. Okay, and uh, of course, not available, not available. There's never any, it's always private owner. There's never any, any data, it's not available. And I look at the altitude though, and it's like 10,000 feet. It's not that high for the type of jet that it is. <laughs> it's pretty low, actually. It's, it's a very specific altitude though. Pay attention to that altitude. Then I did the 3D view so you can look at the map. And I was just trying to locate the, you know, Patton on the 3D view. And, and I was able to do that, you know. I was able to look and see. Um, I could identify a couple different things in here. <clears throat> which is not really important. I, what's important is I identify the flight. The flight that just flew over my head. Right, that I heard it. Clear as day. You know, couldn't deny it. I could hear that motherfucker. <clears throat> so this is the, the ridge line that, that, that I, I live on. It's the Continental Divide. And it, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it, you know, one side, the watershed goes to the Chesapeake Bay. The other side, the watershed goes straight down to the Gulf of Mexico. So it's it's a very, it's a key point there on top. But it's not like a mountaintop. It's like a ridge, like a big plateau. So if you look off in the distance either way, it, you know, drifts down and, and flattens out. But there's a couple landmarks near near where I live. And I was able to identify which direction it's going based on the airports and off in the distance. I could see which direction, you know, the flight was going. Because <clears throat> I know where the where the airports are, you know, are in relation to where I'm at. So that was the first one. And I'm, you know, just playing with the, the app here. Because I, I really don't know that much about it, to be honest. And that's that's why I have questions. But it did seem to me like that was a pretty low... Uh, pretty low altitude for that flight. Which which makes sense because it is going to... It, it was going to Pittsburgh. And that's Pittsburgh right ahead of it. And Pittsburgh is only like 80 miles from me. So it, it probably would be heading down at that point anyway. So, <clears throat> But when I looked at the route, the entire route of the plane, of the flight, 
it's funny because it makes a course correction. They always make a course correction right before it gets to me. Like, you know what I mean? And I could say, well, that's weird. It's, it's almost like they make that course correction on purpose just so that they fly directly past me because, yes, yes, they're flying and they have another purpose. But they could be doing something else as well at the same time. Just like a FedEx truck could be delivering. Yeah, they're delivering packages, but they're also doing this. You know what I'm saying? So, because all these other flights, every other one that, that would fly, you know, over my head, if you, if you look at every one of them, most of them, most of them are straight. They do not make course corrections here. And then here's the next one. Then I hear this next one and I look at it, right? And boom, another United States Air Force, no call sign. And it's, it's, a, it's a fueler, okay? So it's a refueler. And it's flying in circles right near me, <laughs> right alongside me. Coincidence? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying it's for me. I'm just pointing stuff out. These are facts. And I look at it, and I look at the data. <clears throat> now, I thought it was my understanding that these things... See, here's the even the, the video. I, I point the damn thing up to the sky, but you couldn't really see anything, and you obviously couldn't hear anything because... I did check this later on, and you couldn't hear anything. My microphone wouldn't work. It does work for video, but it wouldn't work for this. Um, but it was my understanding that these these big refuelers, I thought they refueled planes way, way up, like like 40,000 feet, like 30, 40,000 feet. I thought they were like way up there. And this thing was up at that at that elevation at one point, uh, but then it came back down to like 9,000 feet. Nine, I think here. Uh, it'll show here in a minute. But I'm looking at the 3D, you know, to identify the landmark off in the distance. Uh, here in a minute, I'll identify uh, Glendale Lake, which is right, right three miles from Patton. I'm looking for it here. And I think it's on this side right here. Yeah, when I go to this way and I look off to the side, I think. Is that it? Yep, see off in the distance there? That's Glendale Lake off in the distance. I do believe. <clears throat> but then, then the plane starts going backwards. But it's getting its flight data from Cleveland. Uh, so it's, it's whatever. So this thing just, just flew over top of me here. There it was. I think it showed Glendale. Either way, it's, this, was, this was the flight. Okay. There it is, I think. That's either... Yeah, that's Glendale right there. <clears throat> I believe. There's not too many big lakes like that. And I'm looking at the airports. So which direction it's going. And it's going up towards Dubois. So Glendale would be on the other side to the, to the right, I guess. Because I'm looking at the airports. See, there's Dubois. Where it's go? Okay, now it's going towards Pittsburgh at the moment. Or towards... Okay, yeah. Yeah, see, Dubois is to the right a little bit. That one there's Butler. It's heading towards Butler. But look, you know, it does circles right there. And I just was asking why, you know, why is it sitting there doing circles right there? We can look back at this data right now if I want to. This was at 7.31 last night. <clears throat> okay, and you look at the calibrated altitude, 14,000 feet. Okay, this is an old one here. This is real old. <clears throat> if any of this is true. <laughs> and now it definitely sounded like a jet like that. But I look at recent flights, there's none. None. There's nothing. And that's, you know, any, and here's the, uh, the altitude and the speed. Now you can see it was up there at 20, 26,000 feet. But then at one point it comes way down here when it starts doing the loops. You know, when it starts doing the loops, it's down here at, to what, 13,000, 14,000 feet. Where you can hear it. <laughs> and that's where it's doing the loops. So is that where they, is that the altitude that they refuel at? 14,000 feet, I thought they refueled a lot higher, but that's just me. I mean, see, because those things definitely don't refuel <laughs> down low. 
I wouldn't think so. I would think they refuel way up. Stealth bombers. So being at this time, the time was, uh, let's see, 7.32. We can look at it. Yeah, I think I do want to look at this. Because there's no call sign. Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> oh, now it's heading back. It's all done. And then I look at where, where it came out of, or where it's, yeah, yeah, where it came out of, where it's heading back to. And this is the same location that, that I had another flight just like this, another U.S. Air Force flight that came right down to me and did a little circle and went right back up to Toledo, Ohio. Came out of this one and then went back up to Toledo. And this was a long, oh, March, March the 16th. Earlier this year, March 16th, that's when that one was. At approximately 1 o'clock. My time. Eastern Standard Time. 1 or 104, 105. There's another one of these that come right down from that same area. Comes whips right around me. And then goes back up to Toledo, Ohio. It's the same thing. U.S. Air Force, and it's like a refueler. So they just come down to refuel planes right over my head, I guess. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe it's a coincidence. I don't know. I'm not saying I know what it is, but it just seems like a, you know, it would make anybody ask questions. You know what I mean? So as you can see here, that was Wednesday, October 12th, and I ended the recording at 7.47. So let's look at, well, we'll say about 7, 7.30 here. We'll look at 7.30. Because I was looking at this for quite a while. I was looking at the area. This is obviously a military base in Canada. I was looking at what this big this big area is here. It, I don't know what it is. If it's a, it doesn't look. It looks like it's kind of blacked out or something. I can't really tell. It doesn't look like it's water because it looks like there's tracks going into it. It didn't really look like woods. Uh, maybe it, it looks like just a field. Some kind of grass or soy or some shit. It's obviously a field. But what do they have growing in the fields there at this military base? <laughs> yeah, you can see Claymore line, you know. Like these, these, these are obviously you can see the buildings, and they clearly look like uh, military training facilities. And, and like, see how the X is on that one, that one back there. That was cool. Hold on. Let's pause that. Let's get back in here. Look at that right there, right? And that, it just it intrigues me. Some of these things like this. You know, just some of these things like this, like the geometry of it, intrigues me. It's like they, uh, it's like they mark the, the territory for different reasons. So they used to do that back in World War II. I know they, they used to, they used to have literally put big arrows, can't make big concrete arrows on the ground, and that was for the postal carriers. The, the planes that, that uh, delivered mail so they could see from the from the air they could look down and see these arrows on the ground these big concrete arrows and know which way they were going no you know so they didn't get off track <clears throat> but anyway let's look at let's take a look at this here we're just gonna take a second look at this we're gonna play back. We're going to go to the 12th, and then we're going to go to same time, right? 19, no, 1931. <laughs> Start playback. Okay, where are we at here? See, it's, I don't know why it puts me right over, this is like directly centered over where my ex-wife lives. 
She literally, she lives like right. Let's see, where's her at? That's Indiana. That's, you know, she's, she's right here, right by Blairsville. It's right after Blairsville. That's where she's at. That's 119, that's 22, okay. Truman Road, really? Like for real? Okay, it's not, it's before that. This is Blairsville. I know her, it's after the Blairsville exits. I'm most positive. There's 119. Let me see here. It's 8 something. The road. There's a little BP gas station. Yeah, because that's the Blairsville exits. And then it's after that. It's, that's not it there. I don't really think that's it. How far is it after that? That's not it there. Nope. Nope. There's a little gas station right there. A little BP. I wonder if that's it there. No, because there's another road that goes off to the right. Must be the next one here. That's not it either. Unless it's an old, old picture. Shit, boy, it's, it's a lot further than I thought, I guess. I think that's it right there. Say. I do believe this is it. I think so. It doesn't have the road number. It's like eight something. Yeah. So that's East Pittsburgh Street, and that's not it. Yeah, that must have been it back there. That's a coal mine. Yeah, because here you start getting into all the businesses in uh, Monroeville. So. Can't help you with that. I didn't ask you anything, Siri. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I really didn't ask you, Siri, anything. So this is the one that I think it is. If I look, see where it takes you. Where does it take you to? Yeah, that's it. That's it, because it goes right to Slickville. Right to that there Slickville. So that be it. Yep, there's Second Street and First Street. See that? See that little that little circle right there? You, you know what's crazy? Are the numbers? The numbers are nuts. I don't want to dox my my ex-wife. I'm not gonna do that. But let's just say that the numbers, <laughs> her address. Is nuts. It's nuts. If you <laughs> if you play into the numbers. So let's zoom out here. Let's look what time we got here. Okay, we gotta go back. Okay. Now here's where I'm at right now, which I'm only right across town. 
Okay, oh, there's it. Oh, there she goes. She's heading back already. Okay. So that's it right there. Oh look, it did. It decided to do a couple more loops. <laughs> it did another loop after after I was done watching it. Oh, big one, yeah. Tell me it went up to Toledo, Ohio. Oh, look at that! Right back, to, right up to Toledo, Ohio. It's exactly what the other one did. So I just ask, was it was it refueling something? It was just waiting. It just happened to be flying right around me until I started recording it and mentioned it. And then it said, oh, well, we're going to do a bigger loop now. We don't want to make it look like something, right? I don't know. I'm just saying. Cause this is this would have been, this last loop here shows a, that's after I was recording it. And after I was recording it, it does what? One last loop. And then I went inside to my dad's house. And then what? It's done. Okay. I'm not claiming anything. I'm just pointing stuff out. Okay? So if we go back, well, if it circled all that time, then it was waiting for something, right? Still waiting for something. And right along this track here. So does it ever link up with another flight at any point? You know, we can do this. Speed it up, you know. Let's see, is there ever another flight links up? There's got to be another flight links up with it at some point. Because if it would have already refueled it, it would have headed back already, right? Just critical thinking. I would think it would have. I'll take another look at it when I'm done here. But Okay, it's, it's doing the circle. So far, there's nothing that I can see that it shows it refueling anything. This might be it, like on the last run here. Let's see, is there anything it's going to link up with? Because the other flight, the other video I have on my YouTube, it does actually show another flight that, that like, that they match flight paths here for a brief period and then and then the one turn turns off and heads south like towards DC and this one heads up to Toledo and it's and it's on its last final run there when it's before it heads up to Toledo when it when it refuels. I'm not seeing anything. I mean do they they probably just fly around sometimes just in case. Oh look it goes over Pelea Island. And then turns. Okay, so it can get its heading. Okay. But it never refueled, did it? Well, let's go back to the beginning of the flight here. Let's try this. 1850. Let's see, where is she at? It's not even there yet, right? There's a couple other of these military flights. Like, look at that guy there. That's... Uh, Two boys to Butler. That's a pretty short flight. But here's this guy. Okay. It comes down here. It's going to do his little loop. It slowed down there. <laughs> Seems like it. It's going to do his little loop again. Turn. It's gonna slow down right there over top of me. <laughs> it's gonna do a little loop again. Nope, it's going all the way up now. It still hasn't met up with anything yet. So nothing matched up its little flight plan. So I just wonder what the you know the the coincidences make will make anybody wonder what's going on. You know, if one person has so many coincidences, that's kind of, it's going to make anybody wonder. It's, it's going to make you just, it's, the thought is going to cross your mind, like, that, that 
you have something to do with it and, and you're going to ask why, what, you know, you're going to wonder why is this flight doing what it's doing because you want to explain it away. You don't want to think that it has something to do with you. Now here's this guy here. Okay, that's the United States Air Force too, isn't it? Okay, <laughs> we got to look at that guy here. See what it's doing? Now it's looping out back and forth and back and forth. It's funny, it comes real close to me, doesn't it? Again. And that's the same thing. It's a, that's a big fucking... That's a great big fucking uh, fewer. See? There, it links up with one. Sure looks like it. It links up with that guy right back there. Here, let's, let's go back. Yeah, that guy right there, see? It links up with him. United States Air Force. Which it says it's on the ground, but it's not. <laughs> and then where did that guy go? Okay, here's it. Here it is. Oh, look at that. It flies right past me. What do you know? Exactly. I mean, like, look at that. You can't make this shit up. It came up around that way and then crossed over. So, it just came from, from really? Okay, it came from down there by Hagerstown, Maryland. Martinsburg. I didn't know there was a Martinsburg, Maryland. But it came from there. Circled around there, Boonsboro. <laughs> and straight up by me. And then it came over to me. Crossed me, and then, oops, let's go back here. Crossed me, and then where'd it go? Let's watch, because it just disappears, right? And it, and it landed in Indiana. So what the fuck was it going? Did it had to, did it had to link up with that other flight and refuel if it was just going to land anyway? You know what I mean? see there's a bunch of these fucking United States Air Force I'm able to find them all for somehow you know and these FedEx these little FedEx fuckers feeders it, it's crazy how they take the same exact track tracks and then you got the private owners So he came from right there, and he came past me before he made his course correction. Which I can listen. I'm open to the to the idea that they uh, that there's certain areas where they they make their course changes. You know, but it's just just you know. It would be enough to make anybody ask some questions. So, you know, here's one, United States Air Force, and that fucker is just going straight down. Just straight down. Straight down to wherever. Same place there that other one took off from. That's EPS, JetBlue. But it's, it's an unbelievable amount of these private owners and these... Uh, See, look at all these that don't have any, any, you know, they're private owners. They're not an airline or they're U.S. military. And you can't look at any previous flights for them. And, you know, I dare anybody, go ahead and check out the, the flight data. You know, see, that fucker's up there at 30,000 feet. See, those jets fly up up there, 30,000 feet, right? That one there, 25,000 feet, right? This one here, 30,000 feet, okay? They're, you know, they're private owners. They're just going straight, just straight. No course correct changes, right? Just straight. See this guy here? Whoops, wrong guy. I wanted that guy there. Another private owner, he's at 43,000 feet, okay? And they're coming straight across there, 22,000 feet. But do you see any of them at at like 10, 12,000 feet. 
There's one at 15,000 feet. Okay, that's the lowest I've seen. But he's still going straight. Okay, he's not making any course changes. Okay. What's that guy there? Amazon Air. Amazon don't have to label theirs, huh? <laughs> that one didn't have a label on it. Because Amazon's special. Jeff Bezos is special. American Jet International, 40,000 feet. You see this? Now, we're an hour after the, the ones that flew over me, and now you don't see any flying over me, like, like where I'm at. Just when I'm outside, well, okay, those two. But they go straight across. They do not change their course corrections. They do not change their course. You see that? And these are the things that I notice. You can call it persecutorial delusions all you want. I'm just fucking noticing shit. That's all. Call it what you want. I'll call it what I want. I call it awareness. I'm awake and aware of shit. You know, anybody who pays attention will see this shit. And that's just a little guy. He's at six thousand feet, and that's the that's probably the you know the altitude they fly at. But look, he just goes straight across. You know, that's normal. That is normal. Okay, straight across. But now. I'm inside, and it's funny how I don't get these flights when I'm inside, when I'm indoors, okay? These flights, they're not happening. They're not flying right near me at all, okay? But we're going to go back now. I was outside, and I was looking at my phone at the networks, right? Right about, what was it, right, right about, or what time was it? Oh, it was 19. Okay, so let's go back an hour and look at 18, from 18 on, right? Okay. And this is where I was at, okay? So let's just take a look here for a minute. I'm sure that'll be a life flight. Every time I look at a helicopter, it says it's a life flight, so. See, life flight. Nice. It's pretty quiet, isn't it? <clears throat> There's one, but but you look, it's going straight across. It's not real close to me, and it's just straight across. Everyone, that one's straight across. See, straight, straight. See that straight? Oh, he slowed down there. <laughs> and he's fucking low too, isn't he? And he's going to Latrobe though. Okay. State College to Latrobe. But he still, he went straight. He did not change his course correct. He did not, like, do a little fucking, little rope-a-dope or do -si do He just went straight. Okay, <laughs> straight, straight. Oh, yep, yep. No do -si does there. Straight. And then you got here, it's 19 something, right? So it's 7, 7, 18, 7, 19. And now you're going to start seeing, okay, that one now, that course, course change, right? Right by me, right? This is it, like right by me. And, and it was a course change. This is the guy that's doing the loops, okay? Right by me. And I just happen to be outside and I'm doing something on my phone when I notice, then I notice, and this happens all the time, I notice the fucking sound of the plane. Or the jet. Whatever it is, I get both. I'm not saying they're for me, but I'm, but I'm pointing them out and I'm asking, you know, has anybody else experienced this? And whenever I find other people that experience the same thing, you know, and it's just some strange coincidences. I would like somebody else to, to do this little experiment here and see if they get these flights to fly just, just like this. If anybody can, can, you know, reproduce this that isn't a targeted individual. Can, can a non-targeted individual, nerd gorilla, reproduce this little experiment and have the same thing happen to them? Like where you have these, these planes that seem to change course the, the ones, the only, only the ones that change their course like that, happen to fly right by you, and, and you visibly hear them. Okay. 
because they were those were the two that, that just while I was outside on my phone and I, and I paying attention, you know, and I hear them, I decide to look and see what they are, and then it's just, there's ones that I notice, just the ones that I notice and I hear and I look at it, and then it happens to be one that changed course correction, and then I fucking noticed it. Like, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm just a psychic, and I'm, I'm a super soldier, and I'm trained to hear just these certain things and then point them out so that military can use my info for whatever. You know, I don't fucking know, dude, come on. I'm just a normal guy. But with 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 abnormal things that happen to me, it seems like it seems like a whole bunch of coincidences happening to just one guy. Okay, you guys can, can try to explain it away all you want. I'm just gonna keep asking questions, the right questions. You know, do do those uh, do those big tankers? Do they refuel planes at fucking 13,000 feet? I didn't think they did. I, I, I just assumed. I, I know that they do way, 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 way up. I remember watching you know, a program about it where they said that they have to go way, way up there to do that. Where they, the atmosphere the, is not as, you know, the air's thinner. And there's not as much pull on the on the aircrafts, I guess. I don't know. You know, they're almost they're lighter up there. So I don't I, I don't know. And then, you know, after I go inside, I'm looking at it and it's like doesn't seem like anything else happens here. We'll speed it up a little bit. And I can honestly say I haven't done a power research on this, and I've only looked into this a few times, but every time I do, I look at it, and that's when, boom, I see the ones that fly right by me. Okay, there's one, that's FedEx, but he went straight, straight, okay? But I see these ones that fly right by me, and, uh, and then it, it gets me to ask, to ask certain questions. And then when you discover other people that are that are reporting the same exact very very specific things, okay, like like the targeted the number one targeted individual, uh, targeted targeted three or something whatever his channel is. Um, every time he walks outside, there's a fucking plane over his head. That, that, that happens to me too. I just haven't. I refrain from from mentioning it for a long time. I tried I tried like hell to explain it away. For as long as I could, and you can only go do so much before you come to the realization that okay, there's no more explaining this away. There's something to this. But uh, see, that one went straight. But anyway, um, I mean, there's there is. A, <laughs> It seems like a high number of flights that intersect directly over my fucking head, too. I just happen to live in one of those fucking, those weird spots that, that I wonder how many flights actually cross exactly within, you know, within 10, 20 miles over my head. How many flights a day cross exactly across that path? Does that have something to do with with why I'm targeted, because certain people that are in certain flight path areas, I don't fucking know, I'm just saying. It's just, there's a lot of fucking weird coincidences. So you see the, see the ridge here, right? Here's the edge of the ridge, going down. See how it goes up there? Now this is the, the high point right there. See where the, uh, the O in Altoona is? That's that's what we call the buckhorn, right? Right there is the buckhorn. That's that's a that's a very very high point, and then there's another high point just like that right here, Patton. So Asheville is a valley, but this is the, the Little Highlands. This is this is a, a pretty high ridge right here. Okay, St. Lawrence is one of the highest ridges around. 
particularly where, like, right, right there where my gram lives is, right, well, the next property up where the, the former Secret Service agent lives, I guess, um, <laughs> is, like, one of the highest points right there in St. Lawrence. You can see, you can see all around for miles and miles and miles. Like, okay, when you're in St. Lawrence right there, where St. Lawrence says, you can see the windmills all the way, all the way on the ridge down here in Crescent, okay? There's a bunch of windmills on these ridges, ridges here, see these? There's a bunch of windmills, and you can see them. You can see them, you know, the lights blinking, and you can see them clear as day. As long as it's not real, real hazy, but you can see that from way up here in Westover. Well, not Westover, but St. Lawrence. Now, how fucking far is that? That's pretty far. See, it's nine miles to Patton, and then Patton to Crescent is another 15 minutes. So this is like, you're talking like like 30 miles probably, maybe more, maybe more than 30 miles. At least 20 some the way the crow flies. There's Blue Knob. That's another high point right there. Blue Knob. It's a ski resort right there. There it is. Blue Knob. Ski resort. See Blue Knob State Park. It's a nice place. But, uh, it's just, you know, a lot of crazy shit. Well, I never, I never looked at Holidaysburg like this and realized it was shaped like that. That's weird, isn't it? It's crazy, the shape of that, of the topography. Huh. That's like just one single ridge, but it does. It goes uh, 220 corridor right here. See, this is where you go from Altoona to State College. State College is where... Penn State main campus is right here. This is what they call Happy Valley. Happy Valley. And Penn State University main campus is right here. Penn State College. And these are, you know, at the bottom of, in the valley. See these little, these little ridges down in the valley? Those are nothing compared to up here. This is the first ridge, Phillipsburg, Snowshoe. But you go further over this way, when you get over to over here, you can't really tell by looking at it, but this is the high point, right down the 219 corridor. See this 219, goes north to south. The highest point in Pennsylvania is in Somerset County. Mount Dixon, I think it is. It is the highest summit in Pennsylvania. And it is in Somerset County. I'm not sure what, where exactly it's at. I've never been there. But it is the highest point. And when you go there, if you go there, and you go to the actual marker, um, I saw I saw a video of a guy that went there. You can't see anything when you get there. You really can't see anything around you. You're just up on, you're in the woods. You're up there in the woods at the highest point in Pennsylvania, and you can't even tell you're on a mountain at all. So where would it be? Somerset County is, is all of this, basically. I'm assuming it might be over here by Ohio Pile. Let's see, there's the waterways. I'm not sure. Seven Springs is pretty high. That's another ski resort. So it might be over there. Yeah, because there's Johnstown. That, that's where, like, Westmont... Westmont Hilltop, they call it. Um, there's a mountain there. It's pretty high. And then the corridor comes straight up through here and it's right through Patton. In between Northern Cambria and Patton is basically where that ridge goes up through. And then Glendale is actually really, really high up. It's a lake, but it's, it's up there. There's a water tower here that you can go to. You can climb up on the water tower. And it's right out here. See, it's right out of here on this beaver dam run. Let me see. There 
There's the lake. I guess the water tower right that's not right there. There's Long's Road. On Long's Road. <clears throat> right up here is the water tower. Right there. So you can come up here. It's called Headache Hill. <clears throat> this is actually called Headache Hill. I go sled riding on Headache Hill here. So you come up to Headache Hill. You can't tell. That's the that's one of the highest points around it. But, but it is. It's right beside the lake. So that's kind of crazy, right? One of the highest points around is, is right beside a lake. And, you know, it's... What's interesting is this lake was uh, was a project by the, the Army Corps of Engineers. So, what, what uh, significance does it hold as far as strategic military significance in this area? I don't know, but it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. So and and you see uh, they do they do do uh, like tests.